Well, if you've asked yourself, why in the heck is he bringing up the subject, the arcane, mysterious subject? I mean, who cares about IgG denial? Well, I'm telling you, if you really don't listen to this video and you don't really think about this, you could suffer from IgG denial and the medical consequences of not paying attention to that long-term dietary problem for the rest of your life. We see it happen all the time. I just did a video on uh, picky eaters. And basically what happens with picky eaters, you know, parents are working around them as they do. They love their kids. They want to try to help them get over this whole problem. So they work around breakfast, do what they can. And the kid really can have significant uh, ADHD problems with the fact that they are a picky eater because, hey, they're, they're going to suffer from a relative neurotransmitter deficiency. Their whole prefrontal cortex isn't going to be working right. They can have all kinds of other downstream consequences. I won't get into the picky eater thing, but the bottom line, if it isn't taken care of as a child, it's going to run, run through a person's lifetime. And what happens with adults is they've had it since they were a child. They've had it. They knew they were picky eaters when they were a kid. They come in and see me when they're 45, and they've worked it out for themselves. It's like, I just don't eat breakfast. You know, that's just what I do. I don't eat breakfast. Well, the bottom line is, I mean, that's that breakfast thing is just one key to IgG problems. You can have a north IgG problem, which is the picky eater thing. You can have a south IgG problem, immunoglobulin G, the ghost immunoglobulin. We'll leave some things here. And I talk about it significantly in new ADHD medication rules, more detail. This is only a two, three minute long video. Bottom line is if you go into denial, here's why you could really stay in denial for the rest of your life. And it's really very simple. With IgG, remember, it's a ghost immunoglobulin, so you don't feel it if you go off of it. Don't mix up IgE with IgG. It's, you can't do it. They're apples and oranges. They're two different things. So what happens is if a person goes off the diet with an IgE problem, they're going to feel it very obviously. If they go off the diet with an IgG problem, oftentimes, oftentimes, they don't feel it. So then, I didn't have a problem. It was not a problem after all. Well, they never had a problem in the first place. Many people who come to see me, they never had overt symptoms in the first place until we really dug in and asked the questions about them. It's like... Oh, yes, that really is a problem. And by the way, we fixed it, and now you're significantly better. Well, why wouldn't we stay with that program? Because I ate the food again, and I didn't have a problem. I mixed IgE reactions with IgG reactions, so I'm into IgG denial, and I can eat whatever I want to. It's not a problem, and I'll just go have chronic problems the rest of my life. That's a key point. I hope that you pay attention to this little brief um, piece on it because what happens is if you get this it's going to it's going to significantly change how you react to psychiatric medications through the rest of your life stay with it talk to you later